In this first one, Asta's being honest, maybe for the first time ever. The first one is brought to us by Naked Lobster. Health should not be our goal. Understanding our body and its needs should be our goal. Hashtag Asta Conference 2022. Just forgot. So no more health at every size, just size at every size? Philly Scorpio. Size at every size made me chuckle. I need to get a shirt that says that. Not gonna lie, I'm seriously considering making a size at every size t-shirt available. From buying bagels. CNN. Almost 40% of individuals lost a quarter of their body weight, said study co-author Dr. Anya Jastroboff, co-director of the Yale Center for Weight Management. Overweight people lost an average of 35 to 52 pounds on a newly approved diabetes drug, study says. That is a lot of weight. Green Apple Lady says, Fat activists will start yelling about fascism, eugenics, and drug experiments to eliminate fat people. Space Llama. We do want to eliminate fat people by making them not fat. Melon Magellan. They'll be secretly happy because they can lose weight with far less effort and no longer have to constantly spew BS to hold on to their last shred of self-esteem. That's my take on it. Then if they fail to lose weight, they'll bash the drug and double down on how impossible it is to lose weight. I haven't really looked into this medication much, but I wonder what the side effects are like. Some of the other medications for losing weight have some rather nasty side effects. Carl Kopp brings us, Besides, flat bellies are unhealthy, our organs need space to work properly, and fat gives that space. Idealist Panflatus replies, Visceral fat literally does the opposite. Naked Lobster brings us, I know that fitness pros are well-meaning when they say everyone should move, or movement will make everyone healthier. Or, we should build communities in our neighborhoods around movement. But it's not true, it's harmful, and we need to stop saying these things. OCR Amazon, movement is harmful. Maybe if you've just woken up stuck in a trap from the movie Saw. Gonzo Fish, I mean, it's a well-constructed evidence-based argument. There's no evidence, you say? The fallback is to claim it's ableist? Oh, never mind. It's a terrible argument. Dean Venture brings us, If we were meant to count every single calorie or gram of a particular nutrient in food, such as carbs, proteins, and fats, Mother Nature would have developed nutrition facts labels a long time ago. Book Hermit, I totally agree. Instead of counting calories, just eat what Mother Nature grows. Broccoli, carrots, fish, apples, grains, berries, olive oil, honey, organ meat, Potatoes, beets, cabbage, spices, and greens. No more Cheetos, Little Debbie's, Hamburger Helper, Frozen Pizza, Ice Cream, Snickers, or anything down the middle aisle of the grocery store. Or is that not what they meant? Wool villain. And put in the work hunting, foraging, and storing it all. Chaton Noir brings us. But having rolls on my body is uncomfortable and annoying. Physical discomfort. A thread. For sure it can be. But why? Consider, are your pants too tight? What is holding you back from buying a bigger size? What beliefs or fears about this idea are present? How long have you had the rolls? Are they new? Anything that is new is uncomfortable until we adjust to it. Is this just a phase of discomfort you need to move through? What do you believe having rolls on your body means about yourself, your value, your worth, negative beliefs about body fat create discomfort? What are you afraid other people will think? Are you worried about their judgment? So is it the body rolls or the fear of judgment that is really the issue? What is required to get rid of the rolls? How much time and energy will be required? How much worry and stress will it create? How much of the rest of your life are you willing to dedicate to being roll-free? This desire doesn't go away when you're older. We make body fat the problem, but really it's our beliefs and judgments about the rolls that make it uncomfortable, even physically so. Were you uncomfortable resting your head on the soft stomach of your mother? How we view fat makes a big difference in how we experience it. Gentle Sunberry replies, This is just unhinged. They actively want to sabotage people who seek better health for themselves, telling them to ignore things like physical discomfort or pain from weight gain, when those are the warning signs you need to listen to. It kind of reminds me of a certain kind of toxic masculinity, where people work out until they're injured, and then continue working out even though they're injured, and then... Several days later, really feel the pain and be get and get permanently injured because they were stupid. From something I won't regret. 
An NHS-approved diet plan that improves health by reversing type 2 diabetes is disordered eating. It's generally so weird how talking about diabetes riles up pro-diet people up. See replies. If you want to make yourself miserable by following a plan that is quite literally disordered eating, be my guest. But stop coming out of the woodwork to force this on everyone else. Reversing diabetes actually isn't possible and is a myth. If you want dietitian recommendations for someone who can support you with diabetes and ED, let me know. Advanced fan. You can put it into remission, though. I take care of several people whose T2 is in remission. They get weekly blood glucose checks and yearly A1C checks, but other than that, they're good. My understanding is also that if you catch it before it becomes full-blown diabetes, that is, when it's still pre-diabetes, you can 100% reverse it. Antenna Cactus The Washington Department of Health posted on Twitter, apparently, Diet culture promotes and is grounded in anti-fatness. It contributes to eating habits that are bad for our health by teaching us not to trust our bodies. On hashtag no diet day, focus on nourishing your whole self and overall well-being. Hashtag intuitive eating. Hashtag body trust. Hashtag no diet day. This is literally one of the things I've been afraid of. The government's starting to promote pro-fat agenda. Show me the evidence that being fat is preventable. Show me. Show me your data saying that you can make a fat person thin. Show me your data saying that a world without fat people is possible if only everyone would eat right and move more. I'll wait. I'll wait forever. Frolicking depression. Would a photo of a crowd from the 1970s count as data? Ken Dude brings us. If your body needs 8,954 calories. What? and you are giving it 2,500 calories, you will keep thinking about food until you've given it the remaining 6,454 calories. That's why your mental hunger is so ever-present. Your body and brain needs and desires a way higher intake, so it will not stop thinking about food until you've given it what it needs. I'm not a mom, but I could compare it to a crying baby who is hungry. Because a baby can't articulate when it's hungry in any other way than crying. You're not telling your little baby, hey, that's enough for now, are you? Your body is literally that crying baby right now, so go give it the amount it needs and deserves. Book Hermit replies, Mental hunger is not like a crying baby. It's like a tubby cat that was fed an hour ago. That little round guy is yowling at me like it hasn't been fed in weeks, and living off dumpster scraps on the street, as if I didn't just watch it get fed this morning. Sorry, tubby tabby. You have had enough. I know this with my brain and not my emotions or intuition or empathy. Withdrawal from junk food can be about as hard as withdrawal from a lot of other things like caffeine or alcohol, especially if you were using food to numb emotions. This is a really dangerous rhetoric. It's the monkey on your back saying, It's so hot outside and you've done so well this week, you deserve a cold beer. Or six. Just give in to your cravings and fudge the consequences. That's something for future me to deal with. Today me deserves this. Purple and orange, I have seen on the internet somewhere a sign that said something like, Do not believe the cat's lies. He's been fed. My cats try to eat my food as well. From Sleepy Blondie Recently, a doctor told me she thinks all her fat patients are lying. Quite a thing to say. She said they tell her they are eating healthy, but their weights are still up. Can confirm this is entirely possible. If the assumption is that people are lying, how can you treat them? Truly irresponsible. Doctors are the new cops. I've been saying it forever. Janny replies, My cousin is a doctor and has been saying that they usually assume all patients are lying, not just fat ones. All of them. Lord of Toast on Earth adds, Oh, absolutely. I know you're not supposed to put Q-tips in your ear. I still do it when my ears are itchy, or very waxy because it's itchy, and I don't feel like douching my ear every time. I feel called out by that last one. Annie with an E. On a post by a doctor detailing the amount of work they put into studying obesity and weight issues, only to be told you have no idea what you were talking about. Someone writes, People calling you fat phobic if you say being overweight is bad for your health, lol. Someone replies, Because that's pseudoscience and it's fat phobic, but like, okay, whatever my dude, guess my college thesis on fat phobia is wrong then? OCR Amazon replies to that part. I don't think anyone who's written a college thesis so aggressively avoids using punctuation like this. 
a little bit crunchy. They never said it was accepted, or what kind of college. Another person adds, We'll never understand people that say being fat is okay. Like, no, it's super unhealthy. It's okay to be confident. But you should be trying to better yourself. Someone else, from my own experience, I can say that being obese doesn't always mean you're super unhealthy. If they had stopped there, they would have been fine. Then they add, A lot of obese people are actually healthier than non-obese people if you look at their blood flow and more stuff. It all depends on what you eat and stuff. Obese persons often only eat vegetables and fruits and sometimes meat to lose weight, which makes them way healthier than a thin person that eats fast food because they don't need to lose weight. What you're saying is prejudice. The pretty much only problem with obesity is if the person still eats unhealthy and their limited freedom of movement. There are definitely obese people who eat healthier than skinny people. But it is almost certainly not the majority, since it's their bad eating that made them obese in the first place. Watch Blood Evaporate brings us. High weight is not an indicator of poor health. Case in point, my vitals have gotten better as my weight increased from 280 to 320 pounds. In fact, my weight BMI graphs are significantly negatively correlated with my blood pressure, fasting glucose, pulse, and respiratory function, all of which, mind you, are and have always been in the normal range. My A1C is normal too. Now, I'm not saying this correlation is causation per se. The change in my weight and vitals could be caused by a common factor, such as decreased stress from graduating college. But it is clear that, at least for me, my weight gain is not indicative of a decrease in health. In fact, it appears to be the other way around. They just graduated college. Come back at 20 years when your weight reaches 450 pounds and tell me how you feel then. Putative skills brings us. It's frustrating and bizarre, but I try my best to avoid the issue unless I have to set boundaries around it. No one wants to hear about your diet. I used to have an ED, very obsessed with calories and exercise, and it's like I freed up all this brain space to do things I actually enjoy. It's also sad seeing people believe their life will magically be all better once they change themselves by losing weight. It has been proven that diets don't work, cause binge eating, and almost always result in more weight gain. I knew I was doing the definition of insanity, repeating the same thing, different diet, and expecting different results. Different P replies, Every single FA I've seen claims to have or have had an ED. And let's be real, they are almost never referring to BED, which is probably the most realistic. It's like part of their hook to get people to listen to them and validate them for overeating. I honestly think that most of the FAs that claim this believe that watching calories and changing portion sizes for a small amount of time counts as an ED. An ED is a serious mental crisis with food that leads to SH from stress and fear. It's not, I cut from 4,000 calories to 2,500 calories for a few days, and I was dying of starvation so I can say I have an ED. I find it telling that they are never specific about said ED and avoid questions. They'll bring it up as a cover, but as soon as you push for any extra info, it's, oh, it's a private subject, I don't want to get into it. No Growth adds, yep, a coworker of mine who is easily 350 pounds insisted she is anorexic. Once she told me she restricted so hard for breakfast, I asked her what that meant. And she replied with saying she only got a Starbucks pumpkin bread loaf and an iced latte. That 600 plus calories, which is a normal to heavy breakfast, I think she genuinely believes that not binging is restricting. She also insists that the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, type 2 diabetes, and a host of other issues she has are due to her genetics, not her body straining under the literal weight of her bad choices. So there's a lot going on there, but I agree that way too many FAs latch on to being able to say, I have anorexia. I think it's just another way to avoid taking any responsibility for how they ended up super morbidly obese. Dean Venture is back once again, but still, his brother has not appeared. Funny how diet culture shames you if you eat to cope with stress, but praise you if you exercise to cope with stress. Food is energy for survival. Exercise is a form of stress on the body. So which one makes more biological sense as a coping tool? I'm not a physician, but if you're under stress, your body is undergoing usually a fight or flight response. Both fight and flight are forms of exercise. Neither of them suggests you should overeat to deal with stress. Watch Blood Evaporate brings us. 
I don't know why doctors get paid so much. I could do that job. Tell me your symptoms. No, don't bother. You just need to lose weight, fatty. Okay, that'll be $450. Yeeter of the rich. Save the $450 and just lose weight before seeing your GP. That's the secret to getting the same diagnosis as a skinny person. Platypus ego. But after losing weight, the problem went away. Due to fat phobia and colonialism. El Faba brings us. Oh, I haven't seen her name in a while. A three-parter. OP is a 6 to 7 X. If you're a doctor and you want to talk to me about my health, and your first response is to talk to me about a diet, then you don't care about my health. You care about how my body is visually displeasing to you. If you cared about my health, we'd have discussions about healthy behaviors I already have and healthy behaviors I need to work on instead of your snap judgment and weight loss prescription without even knowing anything about me. When I say I shouldn't have to keep going to different doctors just to find one that will treat me, a fat person like a human, I mean, that is the doctor's responsibility to do no harm. It's literally their job. If you hate fat people, find another job. New name. If you're morbidly obese, the Venn diagram of talking about your weight and talking about your behaviors you need to work on is two 100% overlapping circles. Floney Smellenballer. They write, this is a slide from a course I was required to take at a large STEM-oriented public university in the U.S. Public service announcement. Why I say fat and don't use the O words. Fat activists and advocates for fat acceptance use the word fat both as a neutral descriptor of larger bodies of size and as an identity marker way to create community. We don't use O words because overweight implies a norm for all people. Over what weight? Obese has a strong negative correlation. Both words medicalize human diversity and body size. It's important to normalize fat. Flonius Mellenballer adds, The class was required for the whole College of Agriculture and was generally about celebrating accepting differences in cultures amongst individuals. Most of the time we were talking about racism, homophobia, socioeconomic issues, then casually thrown in with the rest as fat phobia. This really irked me at the time because I acted like it was in the same category as systemic racism. They also kept repeating Hayes' lies, and I'm like, bro, this seems irresponsible. But as someone who's usually underweight, I felt like a jerk for thinking it was BS. Then months later, I found this subreddit, FatLogic, and I am so thankful to see this amazing community of sane people supporting one another. This is the closest thing to so-called liberal propaganda that I've been taught in college, and I can't believe no one at the university calls them out. Medicalize human diversity and body size sounded like a troll to me when I first read it. Rich heads. Let me guess, this same class didn't talk about NAFTA, or the food industrial complex, I've never heard that phrase before, or how the agricultural industry takes advantage of developing countries. Just nonsense pandering, and love your body stuff? There is an actual logical argument explaining why minorities are disproportionately obese, all caused by the things listed above. But if this class didn't connect the dots, they utterly failed. Open breadfruit brings us. Absolutely astounding that scientists can agree that thousands of microbes have existed on this planet for billions of years before mammals showed up, but still believe natural biodiversity is somehow so limited that fat people are a recent aberration of capitalism. Which is it? Dangerous safety pin. I'm genuinely curious what FAs think about the fact that obesity skyrocketed in the 1990s. How does that fit in with their some people are naturally fat narrative? Or do they just ignore, deny it? Their refrigerator. Or why, if it's genetic, is it located at its worst in the US, a country with a much more diverse gene pool than most other countries? Hardy and free. Or why they hearken to old tropes about fat being considered beautiful hundreds of years ago, and in the same breath say doctors also recommended smoking. Which is it? Do ancient trends merit revival or not? And now, de chonkers. Sadly, there's only one picture. From proud to be RVT. Dechonking in progress, Skylar has lost almost two pounds in the six months she has been in our shelter. It doesn't look like much, but we're all proud of her. Cage picture is the day she arrived. Chair picture was yesterday. I guess the cage picture is the first one, but I don't see a cage. It's just the cat, black cat with green eyes, standing on a mat. He actually doesn't look that chonky. In the second picture, he's sitting on a chair or a cushion of some kind. 
and to be honest, his fur looks better, but his size looks the same. Thank you to everyone who made it this far, and special thanks go to Emmett McNally, Rig, Cupcake or Death, MMC, Story Story, Meg Tran, and Cly for supporting me at the highest level. If you liked the video, please click like and or subscribe. If you really liked it, consider becoming a member. For members at the top level, every two weeks I make a bonus short Fat Logic video for them. So that's something to consider if you decide to become a member. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I wish all of you wonderful people a wonderful day.